Lake Superior. It's the largest freshwater lake in the world when looking at surface area. It goes down more than 1,300 feet at its deepest point. Its shoreline covers nearly 2,800 miles. And for those of us who live near it, the big lake can drive business, recreation, and wonder. You'd think we'd know everything we'd need to know about this great lake. However, we're not even close. Right now, as we've talked today, only 13% of the Great Lakes has been mapped to modern mapping standards. Brandon Crumweedy works for National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA, and he says it's been a while since the organization has taken a good look at the coastal waters of this massive body of water. Last time this portion of Lake Superior was surveyed was back in 1981 and 1982. It was definitely using older technology, so single beam sonar, We've definitely advanced over the last 40 some years here. You can see kind of our, we were a little wavy this morning. We had Recent of, funding uh, has allowed weather, NOAA to get back on not just Lake Superior, but multiple Great Lakes the last few years. And during a recent outing, WDIO joined a crew up from Gulfport, Mississippi on their mission to map the shore waters of Lake Superior. So we're climbing aboard Dorothy, a NOAA survey vessel that's currently doing the most comprehensive bottom mapping of this area of Lake Superior in over four decades. This isn't the regular job of the Dorothy. She and her crew are usually seen responding to coastal disasters, but their job shifted to getting sounding readings of the lake. Zoom out on that map portion. John Gray, the acting lead hydrographer, walked us through how much things have changed over the last four decades. These are uh, big technology upgrades uh, over in the charting world, in the hydrographic world. Now we're using a multi-beam echo sounder, and that has uh, over 200 soundings per ping of, of sound going out. So where a single beam can collect one sounding every second or less, we can collect thousands of soundings in a second. The mapping data collected in these soundings has far-reaching purposes and will impact local shipping, local study, local business, and more. Well, in hydrography, we have a big term. Um, we say uh, map once and use many times. Really, for any science, if you, if you collect data, whether it's water quality samples, fish catches, or anything else, underlying that data is a map. Our primary mission is for safety and navigation. NOAA creates the nautical charts within the U.S., and so this data will go directly into creating new charts. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yep, okay, exactly. With the data we've seen so far, we have seen a lot more features out there that previously went unmapped. And so those types of features allow us to understand, again, fish movement, what type of habitat they're preferring, actually some of the geological history of this area as well. That information feeds into a lot of the various models that NOAA and other federal agencies use to model things like coastal inundation or flooding along our coast, understanding the wave energy environments, where erosion may be occurring along our shorelines. And so with that higher level of detail, we'll get a better understanding of the complexity of shoreline dynamics um, with all this new information. On board Dorothy, data is collected in real time. At the end of an excursion, terabytes of information needing to be looked at. So we're doing quality assurance in real time because we're only out here once. And so every minute we're out here, we have to make sure we're collecting exactly the right data uh, and not wasting any time. It's a big job and so efficiency is key. When all is said and done, the multi-year effort will have charted 35 square nautical miles helping our coastal community better understand our shores. We just hope it raises awareness, you know, as people, you know, enjoy the shoreline, they take another look out over the water and realize it's not just the water there, that there is something to the, to the bottom there as well. And it, it, that's what I think for me personally is the appreciation that there is a lot yet to be discovered here in our own backyard. Um, we don't have to necessarily go to Mars or the moon, um, but right here there's a lot of opportunity for, for the next generation to, to explore and discover the Great Lakes.